Lord, speak to me that I may speak and let live in echoes of your tones. And make my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. With words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts together, be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Is it? Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I'm, I finish my work. Fear not. Go tell that fox for me. Listen and cast out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. This was a direct response Jesus gave to the Pharisees when they came to him, telling him, Get out of here. Herod wants to kill you. My question to you this morning is, what would you do if someone walks up to you and say, I'm going to kill you? Think of it for a while. The person walks up to you suddenly and says, I am going to kill you. Would you stare in disbelief? Would you wet your pants? Would you tremble like a leaf in the wind? Would you turn away and run for your life? Would you smile, shake your head in surprise, and walk away tight-lipped? Brothers and sisters, I have just identified some possible symptoms or emotional responses to fear. Which of the both of the both do you think would be your response? You know, the truth is. No matter which response you choose, it does not elude the fact that fear is the human or body's reaction to a threatening situation clearly demonstrated in terms of fright, flight, or fight. The point I want to make this morning is most times, we cannot predict how we would react or respond to a situation of threat, especially when we are experiencing such a threat for the first time in our lives. In the gospel lesson, that's exactly what Jesus was faced with when the Pharisees came to him and said, Get out, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Apparently, they expected Jesus to turn and run in fear. However, they were disappointed. Jesus did not demonstrate fright, he did not react in flight. But he stood his ground and, and put up a fight. Jada Jesus' response was, and you may hear it earlier, go and tell that fox for me. That I, let me, let me get it clear, go and tell that, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the toilet, I finished my work. 
Jesus' words, my brothers and sisters, indicate an attitude that very well hinges on these words of mine. That's how I would put it. I am not afraid of you here. Imagine Jesus is speaking to a king, a governor, a man who possesses great power and authority in Judea at that time and around Jerusalem. A man who by the snap of his fingers can get Jesus killed, thrown into prison, or beheaded in some other form. A man who's vicious, definitely cunning, as cunning as a fox. Similar to the Stalins and the Hitlers and the Putins of today. My brothers and sisters, whether intentionally or unintentionally, Jesus has received a death threat. Jesus has received a death threat from Herod. And Jesus is saying, I am not backing down. You know, it reminds me of the story of David and Goliath. This big, huge Philistine giant who threatened Saul and his armies and everybody was afraid of him. And David, the shepherd boy, confronted him. And David's words were to Goliath when he confronted him in the battlefield. You were coming to fight against me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all heaven and earth. Definitely, my brothers and sisters, the Lord was on David's side that day. He slew Goliath and beheaded him. I make no mistake that the Lord was on Jesus' side at that time when Herod sent that death threat. My brothers and sisters, just as he is on Jesus' side, yesterday, today, and will be to the world, he is also on our side. Make more this thing. The Lord is on our side too. Because the service reminds us that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. For who shall I be afraid? Definitely. This portion of scripture is telling us, indicating to all of us, that Jesus was not afraid of Herod's death threat. Jesus was definitely not afraid of Herod's death threat. Not that Jesus did not know he would die. That's what he came for. The Father sent him to die. John 3, 16 tells us he came to this earth. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him did not perish without everlasting. He came so as to die for our sins in order that we can have everlasting life, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, let us examine the reason why hell sent that death trip. Jesus. And I want to begin with saying only a coward sends the truth. Herod was a coward. Only a coward lives in fear. And a man who lives in fear drives, trying to drive fear into our so as to feel powerful or to look powerful or for people to be afraid of him. And the reason Herod had said such a gesture, is if we can recall, John the Baptist rebuked Herod 
for taking his brother's wife, Herodias. As a result of that, Herod had John the Baptist captured and placed in prison. And later, he beheaded John the Baptist. Herod saw John the Baptist as a troublemaker and insurrectionist. In like manner, Herod saw Jesus now as another troublemaker and insurrectionist. He knew how closely associated Jesus and John the Baptist were, not only cousins, but he knew that they were righteous men. They were God-fearing men, proclaiming the kingdom of God. Herod, my brothers and sisters, overwhelmed with such fear of Jesus, Herod was driven to send that send their threat to Jesus. Overwhelmed with that fear of Jesus, Herod was set about to destroy Jesus. No wonder Jesus called him, sent back that message, go and tell that fox. You know, it reminds me of a nice song we sing in school. You know? And I'm going to tell you. It goes like this. Satan was a sly old fox. If I could, I would put him in the box. Lock the box and throw away the key. For no strength he made on me. I'm glad that I'm confounded. I'm glad that I'm comforted. I'm glad that I'm comforted and trusting in the Lord. I'm going to sing one more time. Satan was the sly old fox. If I could, I would put him in the box. Lock the box and throw away the key. For all those tricks he played on me. I'm glad that I'm comforted. I'm glad that I'm comforted. I'm glad that I'm comforted. I'm trusting in the Lord. Herod was a sly old fox. No different from Satan. And if I want this one thing, we know that's the manner in which the devil operates. The devils want to drive fear into you. The next point I want to make, I want to make is despite his strength, Jesus we can say, but is courageous and bold. Jesus shows how courageous and bold he is on the tracks. Okay, Jesus might be saying, King Aaron, you threatened to kill me. And you know, I'm not gonna keep my mouth shut. Because I'm not going to allow no fox to outfox me. You understand? And so this is what I'm going to do. There's one thing I know. As a prophet, God gives me the power to speak. And every time I speak, I say, Thus says the Lord. And I'm speaking about myself. I know the Lord is with me. He's on my side. So I am not afraid. And that's one thing we understand and we know of prophets of old. It is difficult to scare them. And Jesus was no exception. It was impossible to bridle their tongue, my brothers and sisters. And you know a fox. Prophets are able to, they are able to point out, they know the satanic foxes. As the same goes, you know, we will not say, if you talk like a fox, if you walk like a fox, if you look like a fox, then you are a fox. My brothers and sisters, Jesus stood 
was as sharp as a double-edged sword. My brothers and sisters, one edge of the sword spills out words of comfort, healing, peace, grace, mercy, and love. But the other, other edge spits out fiery arrows to admonish, to rebuke, to cleanse the heart from all impurities, to cut through sinews and flesh, and to destroy the evil powers and the, high, the, and the demonic powers and principalities in high places. My brothers and sisters, in, in my own guide, he's taught that Mr. Govai could support me that I really think Jesus was a gumshot. He got a lot of guts. My brothers and sisters, despite Herod threatening, Jesus was focused. No fuss, no cuss. Jesus remained focused. Go and tell that fox for me. Listen and cast out know, demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Jesus is saying in no uncertain terms, I have come to do the will of the one who sent me. Not you, Herod, or no one will change my mission on earth or alter it. No host of angels will bar me from doing my duty. You do not give me life, and you are not going to take away my life. Yes, I have come here to save all sinners, all those in, in bondage, to heal the sick, raise the dead, and set all those set or free all those in captivity. Jesus wanted to face death like every other prophet as the Father has bid him to do. He was not afraid, my brothers and sisters. Even though he knew it was impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem, and the scripture tells us, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, why kill us thou, Lord, prophets? There is no prophet that went into Jerusalem to proclaim the kingdom of it that was not killed. Jesus is the only one. Jesus was killed outside of the gates of Jerusalem. He, he was killed at Golgotha. The only one, my brothers and sisters, the question is, and I ask you this day, in whose hands would you like to place your life today? Would you like to place it in one like Aaron? Or would you want to place your hand in the, in the name in the hands of Jesus? Would you want to place your life in the hands of kings and princes and governors and senators of this time and Putins and Stalins? Or would you like to place your life in the hands of Jesus? Jesus is saying to us, fear not. Put your life in the hands of the man who still the waters. Put your life in the hands of the man who calmed the seat. Jesus is saying, when the time comes, you will really see who I am. You will see me again as the Messiah. And until that time comes, you will say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I want to end by making a few important points. What is Jesus, the question, what is Jesus saying to us today? Jesus is saying, if you want to be my ally, Fear not, expect the death trip like Jesus. Jesus is saying, if you want to be my ally, 
Fear not. Be bold and courageous like Jesus. Be imitators of Jesus. If you want to be my ally, remain focused. Don't cuss. Don't fast. Do the way of which your father has sent you to do. Remain committed to your calling. Don't be distracted. And always remember that whether you live or whether you die, whether your enemies succeed to kill you or whether you live or whether you die, your citizenship is in heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in are, are in heaven. If you want to be my ally, be ready to die. We don't alone.